team. However, Sol Campbell would he'd be on the short list. Uh, I'm not sure if he would make it into the final 11, but he'd definitely be in the discussion to make it into the Buckley's boys for the FIFA 20 season. Well, here we go then. The first match when it comes to the Xbox side of things for the competitive year. No. It's going to be Fnatic Techs up against AS Roma Goal Machine. If you do go on Twitter and you do follow these guys, you would have seen in the last, what, 48 hours it was, Richard, there's been a lot of movements around the world in competitive yeah. field. We saw Goal Machine yesterday oh, announcing yeah. his move. Sandro uh, Dai didn't have to go over to Roma. Roma. Yeah. It was just yeah. before this tournament didn't get underway as well. Yeah. The Tex announced that he would be part of Fnatic for the season ahead. As the first chance yeah. comes in out from Goal yeah. Machine, it's a fantastic yeah. block from Virgil van Dijk. Yeah. You might be wondering oh, what, he, what we're talking about with Goal Machine and Fnatic. They, they were always a partner organisation together. They have now split the two separate uh, entities. Fnatic picked up Tex as their first official signing. What a statement. Signing arguably the biggest personality, the most successful player for last season. And I'm jumping straight into the team here. Garincha on that right hand side for Tex. Very icon heavy team. Neymar and Van Dijk, I think the only two non icons in the 10 outfield players for him. Vieira and Hullet in that centre of the pitch, and R9 and Eusebio up top together. And it has kind of been a talking yeah, point, hasn't it, Richard? We saw people building their teams yesterday know. on the practice, uh, on the practice slash media day, on the warm-up day. We were seeing it teams that had a good eight, nine, oh, ten icons in it. You said it there perfectly, Richard. He has got nine icons as yeah. part of that team. I saw Zambrotta in left back for him as well. And I think just because of you know the new icons that have been added this year, Richard, there's been fullbacks added as well. Good fullbacks as well that are usable. Usable icons at fullback, yeah. Carlos Alberto and Zambrotta being two of the real big standouts. Roberto Carlos as well, now with heading, not being as effective anywhere near as it was last year, and jumping, irrelevant. Roberto Carlos does feature in teams. Just onside there? Sholley's off. He's going to be offside there, I suppose that would have been 1-0 to goal machine. Just early if you have just joined us, this is stage one for Champions Cup stage one. There's six stages over the whole competitive season. That's an awful pass there from Tech, just needs to wake up after uh, the offside call and just keep the possession away straight again. He missed it as well last year, goal machine. Had a fantastic year with Team Bro. There were three players that you probably would have said, Richard, one of the best esports organisations of the year last year. The best in terms of FIFA, you'd have to say. Three of their four players making the top four at the grand final on the Xbox. And uh, Goal Machine, first 18, 17 minutes, starting strong here. Direct free kicks, this is something new for this year. We're actually going to see shots. Oh my god, we're actually going to see a direct free kick from R9. He's come in and sting the hands of Allison. Nothing more though from it. Interesting though, as we know, penalties a lot harder to score this year. Three kicks, completely different as well in the, the configuration of buttons you need to press, the ways you can try and score them with the kind of cursor as well on that. We saw how he aimed above the goal, and then you, you use the knuckleball to dip it down back into the goal. Something that I first saw Boras and a number of YouTubers as well sort of playing with the idea that you aim above the goal, actually off target and then knuckleball it down. And that seems to be the, the most effective way of scoring. Even that way you just play it short. Very simple, what we used to see in previous FIFAs. But I like the, the team variety as well with the new icons. You finally, you're not going to be playing. Sergio Ramos at right back. You're not going to be playing Varane at right back. Also, we saw early into the year as well that there's not high level gold items in the game that are better than icons yet. We don't have a 96 Ronaldo. We don't have a 97 Messi. That's why CR7, Messi, Mbappe, all these players, even if they are featured, 95% of the time coming off the bench because icons are so strong this early in FIFA. And again, we haven't even hit team of the year. Have we? Or even followed this new Champions League road to the final. A campaign where we're yeah, going to see loads of special items like pop up and be involved in future see that? tournaments. See that? Oh! Depending oh, on which clubs see that again, go see the full way last year. Obviously, Liverpool went the full way, and we saw how good Van Dijk was. Team of the year, team of the season. So many special items throughout the year. Is his first chance really? That's coming from Tex once again, though. Superb defending, but I believe it was Paolo Maldini there just to jockey his man. And there is a pause oh, queued no, no. by Tex this early on because we haven't really seen him attack. You saw that little body shift as well, oh. a, a new skill we've brought back for FIFA 20. 
very effective if you can do it in the right area maybe change it to a roulette as well just that little shift of your body can open up a, a nice bit of room I'm yeah, really looking forward to seeing how Garincha plays because I know Dylan Mike is a huge fan of him a few pros will say well, he's just not it, yeah. Messi, he's he's just he better he's using Messi, but with Tex using Garinska, I feel as though it could have a knock-on effect. I feel as though people could look at him using him, and then other pro players, other verified players could go, you know what, this is actually, this is got my Surely an open chance for Tech. tries to drag it back inside, is there a rebound there, superb defended. The line. From goal machine. I don't know what I just saw. I saw the goalkeeper coming out like he's on total wipeout, getting absolutely smashed, and there's some heroic defending on the line from goal machine. It's one thing that I've definitely been talking about. I know you've talked about it as well this year, Richard. You know how goalkeepers are moving at times. Some of the saves that. But like their natural parries. Oh, yeah. Sometimes they're not out of danger, are they? They're always back into danger, back to your strikers' feet. Next thing you know, you're one 0 down. The amount of times you are playing weekend league, you're playing rivals, and your goalkeeper will save it, and it just all, seems to always fall back to the attacking player. I know that was something that actually did get patched in, in one of the latest patches as well. The goalkeeper save animation, but you saw there, 40 minutes in, goal machine having. All the chances, both players playing 4 4 2 as well. And you talk about the bench there. Adama Chiari, I imagine that's the scream version of his item. We have uh, just looking at the squads there. Van der Sar and Allison, the two goalkeepers in use for the, both of these two. Have you found a particular goalkeeper yet that, you, that you're enjoying using? I know to Stegen, he's, he's pretty much oh, a fan favourite no, for a lot of the community. I think if we, you know, if we take Ireland no, out of the situation, like any inform that we seem to many goalkeepers, yeah, to Stegen is winning that vote, isn't he? Is, you know, out and out, normal for item, normal goal for item. We saw him at the draft story cup, get back to the number of times, Richard. He was that standout player that so many people liked to use. He was incredible as well. He was used a few times, but still, so like he's like that just pinches that vote for me. I've been able to use him a few times on draft this year. But into the second half now. In a few seconds, we're just waiting for added time to be played. Tech's got That's one more chance in his locker before we get there. Just blazed over the bar from R9. That's a warning shot fired at Goal Machine to say, yeah, I'm still in this game. And in previous FIFAs, that shot right there, you'd have seen it timed. Time finishing, you'd say, around the past, almost, sort of being put into the back a little bit with how sort of uh, catastrophic it can be if you time it wrong. If you, even if sometimes you time it green, chances will still go over the bar, they'll still fly wide. You can just see there in the background, I'm sure you know, as Zalonius, ex-foot whiz now, obviously with Vaius Roma, was a kind of player coach he's been called up this weekend obviously to, to work alongside goal machine and especially when you just saw him getting a little bit agitated there goal machine if you want anyone that's more calm and collective Zalonis is probably that guy who can just calm you down straight away I'm sure a lot of the pros know him on the scene he will just be sitting behind him I believe obviously Tex is there yeah, that chance just after Half time whistle, R9 with it. Gonna get another chance of R9 now. One on one, tried just to pull it back yeah, off the feet of Virgil van Dijk. Right. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to do that though. One thing about Gold Machine though, he's very versatile in a number of ways. He can change the way he plays a lot of the time. Remember the E World Cup final? If he wanted to keep possession, he kept possession. And I mean, properly kept possession. Uh, I remember that game against Tass <laughs> where he held the ball, grinded out the result. I mean, he's one of them, he's a player that can adapt, sorry. Like a chameleon. Whatever formation you throw at him, whatever play style you throw at him, if it's Dito, oh. who we know keeps possession a lot of the time, we just saw like literally over 180 minutes of nil nil action. There's a drag back there, his tech, surely into our nine. There's the shot. And it's all about goalkeeper saves sometimes. Unfortunately, on that occasion, Van der Sar could not get enough power behind. I'm not sure if he got a deflection on the way through. No, he did, yeah, that's what. Deflection. It, it, I'll take it back, Van der Sar. Yeah. It looks like a save that he should have been making, and then you saw a, quite a big deflection off Van Dyke, and then the second deflection as well off the other defender. But Tex with the lead in the second half here. 
I don't know if it's something that you've noticed already, Richard, what, we're just two games in, obviously we're still in round one of Swiss, PlayStation's done, we're on Xbox now. We're not seeing any pros really take a risk on the edge of the box at the moment. Everything is in and around that six-yard box, whether it's a little finesse, whether it's just toying with the goalkeeper, making the goalkeeper move, then you have an open goal. We haven't really seen any players take a risk from outside the edge of the box yet. Well, there's just no space to open up on the edge of the box as well, with a number of players playing quite low depth, some players playing drop back. It means that the space that you get is pretty much four or five yards out. That's where, if you can get past that defence, that is where the space well, is. In front of the back four, you've got there, 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 usually there. four midfielders or two CDMs that are just there, statues on the edge of the box. I know that. Right, like to find that through ball there. You say they're trying yeah, to link up it. with R9, obviously. Two names that we were very familiar ah, with uh, last season. FIFA scene, especially oh from the word God. go as well. In no, the first the Champions Cup last year, which text did go and win. Here's our nine chance for goal machine to equalise. He will. Just like that, all he needed was one chance, and he's straight back in this game. Really smart finish as well from goal machine. That's one of the, the real big selling points of R9. He can go left or he can go right. Yes, he's a mountain of a man, yes. His player model feels bigger than everybody else's, but if there's one thing that he is lacking, it is that pace. It's that movement from one foot onto the next. A team of the year, Sergio Ramos, for example. A team of the year, Van Dijk, might have been able to get closer to him to, shot, to stop that shot coming in. Right there, R9, with the agility, with the quick change of pace, dribbling, ball control, the stats that he possesses, he just got away from so quickly, quite fortunate in off the post, but you've got to say, it's what goal machines deserve in this game. Drop the text down straight away, that's all it took, one chance straight down the other end, Shimmy to go inside, went the other way on that right foot, we know that R9's got a five star weak foot, so he can shoot on whichever foot that he wants. And just like that, Tex will bounce back in front. Two goals to one. Four, that's by goal yeah, simple as that. Hitting it straight from kickoff right there, Tex. Coming down the other end. Inside the box. When you get inside the box with our guys, you're dangerous. We've seen it time and time again. The subs here being introduced as well for goal machine. And know that Zalonius is a massive fan of Adama Traore, the informed Adama Traore at right back. This is the scream of Dama Traore coming on. 98 pace. It's incredible, isn't it? This man has. I was fortunate enough to pack him like five, six minutes after he came out. I did see that. I did see that. Unbelievable. He's got a, a quite hefty price tag on the transfer market right now. But if you're looking for a super sub to get in behind a fatigued fullback or a fatigued defender, he is the man. I think you hit the nail on the head there with that word, Richard. Fatigue. We're, what, 69 minutes into this game now? There's 21 minutes left. Substitutions at this stage in the game are so crucial, so important as well. Depending on who you choose, you can just see Troyori on the right-hand side of the screen, right at the back. In which I'm sure he will be trying to make an impact within these last 18 minutes. And to be honest, substitutions aren't something that the pros have really had to deal for and against. Because of the restrictions to teams, a lot of people were just stacking out the squads and then having the 75 rated on the bench to get the best possible starting 11. So you've not had to, to, to face a Messi coming off the bench or a Cristiano Ronaldo coming off the bench, for example, and then Mbappe coming off of the bench. These are dangers that you've had to play against. So, in my opinion, I feel like substitutions this event when it's still quite fresh, could be a massive factor. Of course, it's a great point, as we know, sport restrictions came in for this year, online qualifiers only, obviously not at events, events you play on the eSports edition of the game in which you can use any player up to a certain date, including obviously promos, team of the weeks, any icon that you want. And just 10 minutes left. Texas lead in this game. Two goals to one. It is Swiss, though. Two legs as always. Every single match. 
So he'll move into the second leg with a 2 1 scoreline. Or could he get himself a first shot? Comes in. Just blocked away there by Maldini. Yeah, that was beautiful as well. Down the near side. Stand on the ball, fake shot. And then the Elastico. Look at Troy all right there. You go, you can see him trying to just burst away. I think he's Zambrotta. Um, that accelerating fake shot trying to get round him, unfortunately. Zambrotta still got enough left in the end's engine, though, just to get back. Just to get back possession as well. He literally just looking to burn past him with the right stick. Knock it and go. And there's also, Van Dijk for you. iteration this year in FIFA as well, which not a lot of people actually know about. If you have got a pacey player, you can double tap the sprint button. And you'll perform a sprint boost. It's a little bit like taking a, a touch with the flick of the right stick. However, this year. keeps it a little bit more under control, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, definitely. You're playing weekend league this week, and uh, you're trying to get a high finish. You brought someone off of the bench who is quite pacey. Be sure to utilize that double tap R2 spring boost. Yeah, definitely can help you walk, just gain those extra few yards away from your man. Especially for a player like Troyora, which you can oh, probably yeah. see Goldberg looking, looking for now. He's right on that, that right hand side, yeah. waiting for the ball. Just trying to hug the touch line. You can see the run that Cristiano Ronaldo's trying to make as well. Van Dijk just getting a foot in the way to say no, thank you. Cristiano Ronaldo as well. Imagine Ronaldo coming off the bench in the 87th minute. Fresh. Yeah. We know how good of a finisher he is. And Eusebio as well. When it comes to FIFA Ultimate Team. Professional right here from Tex, just trying to see this game out. Pressing this year, not one of the strongest points. Four players in FIFA 20. You don't really have all the tools to be able to press how you want to and be able to win the ball back. So it means that people can keep hold of the ball and actually it's sort of like constant pressure team press in which it will really, really fatigue your players. And sometimes you'll not even be able to win the ball back.